a girl I used to date, uh, send me this text message. What do you think about it, Jared? Um, the text was, do you think this colonoscopy is going to be easier than accidental anal with you? Yeah, it gets that your juices right? flowing and hearing how the new grooming techniques involve laser hair removal. Wait, so you're not waxing your ass? What are you doing? Lasers, is like they shock you. What do you mean shocking? It's, um, you know, like electric, sh like for self-defense. Imagine a miniaturized version to just like shock so the hair off. So somebody convinced you. you that tasing your asshole is electric uh, hair removal, laser hair removal? Not someone, Anna. I'm I did under protest, but then we compromised, and I did it. Is she utilizing the area though? Are you guys getting involved in that kind of space, or is it just aesthetic? It's actually kind of disturbing. It's a little bit like they get like there's a nice Russian lady who's like T pull off pants, turn over, spread <laughs> cheeks, and I'm just like, how is this your life? Like you signed up to just like all day shock men's assholes and women's crotches. Um, like this is your chosen profession. It really astounds me that people get into like certain professions and it's like, this is- That's basically what we teach. We teach men how to shock ass, but this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. I mean, then people are like jealous, like, oh my God, you got into dating coaching and life coaching. That's awesome. Versus, you know, Michelle is like, I laser fat, ugly, hairy assholes for a living. Like that's your- Well, now I know too much about your asshole. Yeah. But uh, how did the conversation do, Brandon, start? Do you remember seeing when we lived in the old venue? And the old, do you remember when we lived in the old apartment? Do you remember seeing? Did you say we lived in the old venue? You're like, the old venue. I, I call it apartment. Back in the Akathon days, we yeah. lived in yeah. every apartment. He's, he's like, now. the stage was to the left and the crowd was to the right. <laughs> yeah. And it, we had that cool lighting fixture. I was really yeah. in with the DJ. I got yeah. 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 every night. Yeah. No, he's the, like, that's a sick venue. I used to sleep in the back. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. But anyway, go ahead. No, do you remember when I lived? we lived there? The first time that you saw Jared's asshole with your, oh, yeah. with your own two eyes? Oh, yeah, for sure. How is this the beginning of this? We were talking about my asshole. So talk about his asshole, if anything. Do you, you, do you remember what it was like? You've done weird it. shit. I've done weird shit? Yeah. No, I want to know, though. You convinced me to shave my arms out one time. I believe you told me to shave your lip bag. I did you shave your arms? I went through a whole phase. Remember when I used to tell, I used to tell Al to wear uh, medium shirts, yep. and then I went to large shirts. I'm really with the, with whatever the trend is. Shmedium? Shmedium. But how did this conversation go? Because Anna had to be like, this is bad. <laughs> no, no. Well, she got reciprocation. So she's going. Oh, you told her her asshole was bad. No, no. She's oh. going to be like clean as a baby seal. She's right. just shocking and shit, which I'm like. If you guys are doing mermaid play. Yeah. yeah I get let's, it. Let's go. Let's go for it. For sure. Um, and then she's like, you should come with me. I'm like, oh, here we fucking go. Nice. That's oh, a nice subtle yeah, play. Nice by her. Oh, just come by. Yeah, she, check out. Check she's out. like, it's a two for one. And she's just got a piece of, piece of <laughs> loose leaf paper that says two for one. They're like, singer, Jay. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm okay. I guess and I'm beating Then I forgot one of my old friends, Jenna. I don't know if you guys remember Jenna and Cameron, the two. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I forgot she got me a free pass. When I went there, they're like, what do you want removed? I'm like, ears, hobbit feet. Maybe some butt, you know, I don't want the hair. Yeah, that's your first introduction, a little butt play with a laser lady. Wait, they take the hair off your foot? The foot? I don't have your ceiling. I don't really have the hobbit feet anymore. I don't. Anytime your feet are out, I try to close my eyes and run away. It's not that bad anymore. It's pretty nice. <laughs> this is not a Which good start to an episode for Jarrett. I love I this. I'm just saying it. Like, how did, how did I get in the hot I'm like, I'm like, yeah, no, I, I, I saved it up. And like, all the time. I'm notes. like, so, Jarrett, how does that make you feel? Well, that's all the time we got for the... On the this, Brandon, this on the top of my notes, it literally says... Rose Jarrett? Open talking about Jared's asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Literally says that. That's where we're talking. Mission that's accomplished. Yeah, we got to talk about your ass a little bit. Oh no, his God. ass is a fucking sight for sore eyes. Uh, it was really scary. Did you think it was a sight for pink eyes? It's a sight for pink eyes. It's, it's <laughs> that's a, how you get pink It's eyes. definitely. Uh, that's definitely how you there's get some, pink there's eyes. Some, Feud <laughs> There's some bad stuff going back there, but I'm glad you're cleaning it up, buddy. That's an advantage. We learned right. today, too, that Jared's girlfriend fears that Jared and I are so comfortable with each other that we oh may or God. may not be doing butt stuff. That's a new development. Yep. Yeah. She's uncomfortable with the gay and jokes just because laying it on. Yeah, thick. So of course we tell him. Yeah, well, you're laying like, it onto him, or yeah. Oh, either way, he lays it onto me, whatever she feels. So she thinks you guys are playing with each other's Johnson. He's like, she no. just brought this up today. Yeah, just today, she's like, you guys are way too comfortable with the gay jokes. It makes me uncomfortable. He goes, well, he clearly be the power bottom, it's like true. right off the bat, he and you just see her be like, ah, like you're crying on the inside. You can tell he'd be a bucking bronco. Oh yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys look like a really if we, successful gay couple. Not right? a gay duo. <laughs> no, tell, tell me what your honest thoughts. If we were gay, this who would nice. be top? Who would be bottom? Because I'm looking at this, he owns a million shoes. He shaves himself clean to bottom. Nice. No beard. He's obsessed. With Only his today, fitness. no beard. He's obsessed with his fitness. I think we know who the power bottom is. I think in public, Jared would like appear chubby. to be the dominant one, but I think in the bedroom, Brandon would take over. Yeah. <laughs> tell him, Al. Tell him, Al.
This All is right. a really good episode for Jared's ass. Speaking of Jared's We're ass. We're going to title the Roast Jared episode. Yeah. No, it's please. not a roast. The title of this episode is Assless Chaps. Yeah. I, I, think, I feel like a weird intervention where I did not say I always wonder that because me, when either one of us, me, Jared, Brandon, Jared, whenever we're walking through the world. Me, Jared, Jared, Brandon, Jared. You know I'm saying whatever combination of us is around, I always think that people do think we're a gay couple. And we, the conversations we Big have, club. I feel like the, most people just like go through life and don't say anything. And they're just like in their little world. We're just commenting on the world at all times. I don't like to cross the street without holding hands. So <laughs> sue me. <laughs> Let me transition us to dating a little bit. So, you know, we're giving them a little bit what they want here. So what's funny is I'll still get guys here who think they have to be hyper masculine to get yeah. girls. Oh, no. Not realizing that some of the best producers I've seen, naturals, other coaches, whatever, they act, some women think they might be gay. Like it's an actual. You're welcome, ladies. Yeah, it's it's an actual thing where like, when guys can be more animated, they mix it up with over effeminate, I guess, and they're concerned about this, right? So I don't know if you've experienced that where like the closed off macho shit, like that doesn't work. Like the difference between James Bond archetype versus Ryan Reynolds. I go Ryan Reynolds all day. I don't like the whole super masculine stuff, but maybe you guys feel differently on this. Nah, I played college baseball. It's nothing uh, hyper masculine there. Yeah. It's all just, uh, yeah. It's all just gay jokes and feminine, uh, feminine uh, personas. And it's... I, I think it's interesting, dude. I think it's like it comes full circle. So you meet a guy who doesn't have a lot of social skills, and then he wants to open up and get better. And then I think the first mistake they make, or the first like gone too far, is they try to be too high energy. They're like, hey guys, what's going on? And they're like excitable, and they I think that that doesn't play well. But that's their way of getting out of their head, right? So, Jared, they come up and their natural energy is nervous and scared and fear. So they try to be, I'm fake happy. I remember I, I, when I coach a lot of times, I'm like, I tell a lot of the guys I work with, don't have fake fun. Right. Like fake fun is when you're just like in right. a venue and you're just like pretending like everything's you're great. You're like napkins, right? You're just like doing that. You know the guy that's like dancing by himself, but he's like trying to look like I'm having fun, right, guys? That to me is a very um, off-putting energy. I think that you have to be able to have a more, I don't know. I, I kind of, I'm on the other side. I think a little bit more masculinity is in now. A little bit more like slow, low, like that kind of energy I think it's. Here's, okay, so I have two stories come to mind. I want to, I want to, I got two stories come to mind on this that put in perspective. The first story, do you remember Odin? This might be before your time. Um, yeah, Thor's dead. Asian, <laughs> that Asian guy. I don't know. Yeah, Odin. Okay. I got Brent with that one. So, um, I forget his real name, Sally. Um, Owen and I, we, we decided we're going to go to a gay club to meet women because we're like, we're going to have no competition. Genius. No guys do that, right? That. Actually, not a bad idea. Love no, that. It's not the worst idea. So we were like, we're going to go to the gay club and we're going to, you know, play this off. And what is one of the wingman rule number one? When your wingman says something, what do you have to do? Agree with it. Thank you. You have to go with the women, right? So I'm out there and I'm thinking we're just going to pick up girls like normal. This is back in my like, you know, full pickup days. Um, and I think we're going to go normal. Next thing I know, o Odin uh, grabs me, brings me into the set with like these three. What it was a very attractive girl. I was just like, wow. Um, Odin girls and goes, this is my boyfriend or this is my, my buddy. Perfect. So, something along those lines, but basically he's like, this guy's gay. And the girl's like, and they're so happy. Like, oh my God, great to meet you. And I'm like, nice to meet you. Oh my God, I love your fucking shoes. Where'd you get the... I, I just go like, yeah, girl, yeah, yes, queen. So I, similar how you normally do it. Basically, it, it wasn't yeah. that different. But I'm like, like all right, like, I'm going to self image this. I'm going to joke yeah. around, have fun with this. And they're eating it up. They're liking it. Um, next thing you know, she's, she's asking me to feel her tits. Right. She's asking me to like, you know, get, get in there or whatever. I'm like, this is yeah. awesome. And then you're just like, this is a fear boner down here. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, I'm like, I don't see the long-term plan here, but we're bouncing them around from, from there. We went to their club together. They're giving us lap dances, doing stuff. And I'm like, but this is he amazing. He was straight. No, no, actually, funny enough, he said he's gay, and when he, <laughs> he said he's gay, and then when they were bringing on me, I was like, well, I'm technically, I'm bi. Uh, I'm trying to, like, uh, I'm trying to like, give myself a little backdoor right. thing. Um, oh, you're trying to get yeah. the backdoor from me? <laughs> I'm trying to get the backdoor. That's nice. And I think we, like, pop, it was, it was like two, it was like girls, like, being silly, like, dancing, kissing, grinding, all this stuff. Um, one of the friends had a freak out, she saw her accident, got pulled away. But I was like, this girl, like, I feel like something could happen where this is an angle and she would be attracted to me or be into it, which just goes against the whole super macho, super macho. I, so I was when I first started seeing like, yo, there's some attraction here, even with the gay thing. Not to mention guys like Sin, Savoy, 
Uh, Neil Strauss, even. Right? Strauss is a very like underlying gay energy. That's what I'm saying. So all these guys have these like gay energy and like they're no do, beef. They do very <laughs> no beef. And they do very, very well. I don't think it's gay energy. I think it's comfortable energy. It's just well, like that's, no, yeah. it's a, no, it's a feminine. Well, it's like feminine. Like straight up. Jared, do you, the reason I think this is effective is because let's reverse engineer it. Why is potentially being effeminate or gay uh, disarming is because it's non-threatening, right? So the girl doesn't feel like the guy wants Keep something. Your fucking toxic masculinity out of here, bro. Yeah, it doesn't. She doesn't want anything from him uh, or from her. Sorry, and I think it's like challenge. You can't get it. Yeah, it's you a know? challenge. That's a good one too. It's like, oh, this guy's like, I can't get him. Maybe I could turn him. Want what you can't have. Yeah, that's a, right. there, There's a lot of interesting things that work. Albert puts that off with the way he sits. No, I do. Your girls are like, ah, disarming. Now, by no means am I not, am I endorsing that guys should go off and pretend to be gay when they're not. I'm just want to go against that mentality of oh, I got to be the super cool guy all the time because that's what works. And I remember later on when we were, um, my media coaching back in the day, uh, I had a Russian guy, um, student, and he was super closed off, super like, uh, you know, like just, you know, caveman. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, how do I get through to this guy to be more animated, to be more playful, to stop, you know, being so serious. So finally, I'm like, you know what I want you to do? The next girl you go do, I want you to approach her as if you're like flaming homosexual, like flaming. And he looks at me like, what? And he's like a, like he was like a rich Russian guy, you know, like high stat. He's like, you want me to be this Russian, you know, this uh, gay fairy? What the, what the fuck are you? What do I pay you for? It's usually, I'm like, bro, I know. Just trust me. Try it out. Da, da, da. I'm like convincing him. And he's like, okay. He does it almost to troll me. So he's like, all right, you want me to do it? Fuck you. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. He goes up and he goes, hey, sexy lady. Da, da, da. Like, but he was actually being animated, yeah. high energy, whatever. And the girls start eat for the first time. They're laughing with him. They're eating it up. And he's just like, I'm trolling, but this is working. You could see the yeah. gears like, what is happening? Long story short, he comes back to me. He goes, get it. <laughs> this gay shit that works. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's, it's not that. But like, there's more to it. But I'm, it just shows me like, guys are too serious. I guess that's yeah. a whole soapbox. Too serious. Too, too macho watcho. Too worried about how they're coming off. Well, another thing is not too serious. They take themselves too seriously. So I've that's seen, what I meant, yeah. So I've seen Jared or guys that I'm coaching they'll come back to me with a feedback and they'll be like, dude, these girls thought I was gay. And I'm like, and the, I think the worst thing you can do when you're getting that kind of feedback is qualify yourself. Right, right. And be like, no, I'm not gay. I'm super tough, right? Yeah. Like in Jerry's example, the guy, his, uh, Odin's just like, he's gay and you just ran with it. Where right. yeah. guys are like afraid to be called. No, you just gotta go with it. You just gotta be like, yeah, I have a lot of shoes and me and my best friend cuddle, so what? Exactly. Yeah. And that's, so that, what it is, is you're taking the idea of being super comfortable in your own skin, and I think women are really attracted to that. What they're not attracted to is insecurity. So if the guy is like, oh, is that okay? Did I come off too gay? What did I do wrong? you dead. You're like, right. you're, you're lost. Right. Uh, do you agree with that? Or No, absolutely. I just, I think there is something to be said about your presentation as masculine. You know, tall, muscular, beard, like you have masculine attraction Energy. vibes whatever but like you can offset it and i here's here's my ultimate guy i think is and this is what i teach um guys in program is you need to be the multi multi-dimensional man yep that clicked early early on in my career because a girl actually pointed that out to me where she's like i'm with you because i can't figure out there's so many different sides of you like you're the cool guy i was doing like the you know, intrigue, mystery method stuff back then. But she's like, but you're also this dorky side. You're very intellectual, but you're also just like joking around all the time. And she's like, you're just, you're just all these things. Most guys, they're like one thing. And one thing. You're just a nice, romantic, sweetheart, but there's nothing else there. You're the bad boy, toxic guy, sexual guy, but that's it. I can never take you on a mom. I can never, to, you know, date you seriously. Um, you're the baller guy on the yacht, status guy but you're boring as shit. You have nothing else going for you but your money. Like everybody's like one thing. I, I see right now, I'm not going to say his name because it's, he's running it, but this is actually a student of one of my students. Um, I'll, I'll say my student. You know, remember Luke uh, Krog? Krog yeah. Shout out to him. He's running his um, social circle stuff. Phenomenal. Lo love Luke. Um, one of his students, who I'm not going to say his name, uh, started promoting his stuff about how to blow up on, on Instagram mm -hmm. and how to get girls with Instagram, right? And I'm looking at it because uh, uh, he's getting known for this. And I'm like, it's not bad, but you are missing a key element here. And that is, it's all, look at me, I'm, I'm cool picture over here. Look at me, cool picture over here. I'm looking over this way now, cool picture. 
artsy picture here. And I'm like, this is all the Instagram is. And I'm like, there's nothing about charity or mom and dad, the awe factor. Uh, there's nothing goofy or silly. There's nothing that shows he's funny. There's nothing that shows display of excellence. There's something that you're better at than other people. There's nothing about hobbies or interests that a girl might want to respond to, active lifestyle, whatever. It's just find me in a yacht, a... Right, I'm just doing stuff that I think that you think is cool. It's, it's going with the status frame. Right. I, I basically boil it down um, on, on Instagram or actually shout out to Trip. I'm going to be having him on a podcast later on. So shout out to... So stay tuned for that. Trip actually coined. I'm so mad I didn't coin this. <laughs> I'm like mad, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal it because did Trip stumble upon it? Yeah, he stumbled. Uh, yeah, he tripped right on it. So, um, I love this phrase: digital body language, DBL, digital body language. And he's like, you in today's day, you like need that. to present yourself with uh, with a digital body language. That way you pick, the way you post yourself, how often you post, your stories, uh, your texting habits. The, the now a lot of girls are doing their DBL with a BBL. Yeah, uh, true. <laughs> that is ultimate. <laughs> um, but I'm like, that's so genius. And we have to get good out. at reading that. <laughs> it's good. The DBL, BBL. <laughs> we have to get good at uh, reading that. And that's something I'm noticing is like, if all you are is one thing, you're basic. You're boring. And you're boring. You're predictable. But that's what I'm seeing all these other coaches, a lot of coaches talk about with their Instagram is, Cool guy, cool guy, cool guy, cool guy, cool guy. And then I'm like, let me let me investigate. And I looked at the comments. I started going on the coaches and their students, and I'm looking at the comments, and it's like 95% men, right. maybe one girl's comment. And it's just like... So let me ask you this. So not everybody's going to be, you know, eight-faceted and like all these multi-dimensions. So if you have to pick three to help guys like round it out, is it like cool guy, dorky guy caring guy like what what are your like three like important can i, got, can I give yeah. you a yeah, you're on yes, i got eight I have, but i'll yeah yeah eight do you really have eight yeah. i just like guessed eight i was like i have eight you were you were like rattling them off yeah. go out what do you think i mean I, I don't have eight i just have to me it, it, what jared's describing with the multifaceted the best way you can balance it is this carry yourself like an alpha with good body language with good tonality never seeming insecure being comfortable and then the way I do it, the way this is what I do to 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 offset it, is understand girl coding and girl language. So know how to say those phrases. Like you said, slay queen, get it? You could still say that like, girl, you're killing with those shoes, slay. Like use female language, but you don't have to present it in a but that's feminine texting. way. I'm talking about your no, this digital is real life. In real life. Oh, in real life. No, yeah, yeah. no, but in digital world body language, when you're presenting yourself on Instagram, your stories. Oh, that I have no idea how to do. I don't know how to that, do but that, That's digital body language. So yeah, I have yeah. eight different... So if I'm going to post something on Instagram, a story or a post or, or online dating, present myself as a picture, I need to fall in one of these eight frames. Okay, what are they? Oh, I'm talking my head. Okay. Well, number one is sexy. So that's a classic one. Sexual, good-looking guy. You're welcome. Well-dressed, you know, whatever it is. That, so that's probably the main one you think of with online dating, like the first picture yeah. of yourself, dressed up. On number two, which I would definitely put in my top three, this one, the awe frame. Right. Family, charitable, puppies, 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 mom and dad. Mom and dad, all that one. Third one, you got to be like, you got to be able to get away with this one. Um, fitness slash athletic. Not everybody can obviously do that one, but if you could do it. Working out, doing a sport, anything along those kind of lines. Uh, number four, this is the one all the other coaches pick up on, status. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're on the yacht, you're at the table. Rent, you're, rent you're, a Ferrari. Yeah, That's what everybody fucking does. It's I so know, annoying. It's so, it's so obvious. Um, number five, I would say display of excellence. So you playing the piano, you doing... Um, Stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy. you doing something that's better than other people. Right. Number six is the adventure. So uh, traveling, skydiving, um, scuba dive, historical, you know, something that's right. like you're clearly adventurous. Little outdoorsy little. Sure. Yeah. Uh, number seven is social proof and pre-selection. That's pretty good off the top of his head, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Good. Social proof and pre-selection. So obviously you're surrounded by friends. You're surrounded by um, girls that, you know, are great. Um, by the way, social proof and pre-selection, funny enough, Awful with online dating. Right. I think it's great. Good for social media, bad for online dating. That I makes would sense. never do it for online dating. Yeah, because you only get however many photos. Why do you want to like give them a question mark to be like, uh Yeah, and it just comes off if you're too good, it comes off player vibe, like, oh, this guy's around women. It's like, right. is that what he thinks? Right. Disposable. Right. It's like 
um, yeah, that, that makes sense. That's a really good, that's a very well-rounded perspective on how to do it. And then eight is uh, goofy humor. Anything that I shows that it. nailed. You're, you're joking around. You don't take yourself too seriously. That's a hard one to do online, man. That's so hard to communicate that online. Uh, usually it's costumes. So like me at the Renaissance Festival, eating a turkey leg, um, hanging upside down on a zip line. Yeah. I tried to just post a picture like this, but they didn't get it. Yeah. Um, I didn't get it. Online, you're, you're, and it doesn't always have to be more for posts. It could be like your stories, you, you know, self-deprecating, like silly thing, whatever. And here's a beautiful thing. So, I, I, wow, I got the other top of my head. And I guess a uh, uh, shout out to uh, honorable mention, wild card, something that's very you, that's not necessarily super attractive, but it's definitely not going to do unattractive points. But it's, so for me, it'd be like the nerdy shit. Yeah, well, I think that's important because that attracts the kind of people that you want. Exactly. So it's like it's me at exactly. a baseball game. Might a girl might not think that's cool, but yeah, but it's still sports. So you're gonna like show poker. my receipt when I'm getting Your a discount. Your be like poker. Yeah, it's not attractive. It's not unattractive. It's just like oh, here's me playing poker. That's part of who I am. My identity. Right. Yeah, yeah. right? Interesting. So his would be like real estate. I guess that could be statusy or whatever. Yeah, but the gym and stuff. Right? Well, that's, that's fitness that's and that's my whole life is gym eating. You guys were talking, but I said I would just show my receipt and show the discounts I'm getting on clothes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, so go on the spot. Give me like your top three. If somebody's going to focus on like adjusting their for online dating or Instagram, give me each for Instagram, and then write it out with like different subtext. No, I'm just kidding. Instagram top three. I would say uh, status, social proof, pre-selection, and um, all the cute. Awesome. That's nice balance. Yeah, correct. It, so that's, that's what I'm trying to say. The, the frame should balance the other frames, nice. right? Because you're too much of one thing. That's a nice intro, though. Like, instead of, like, here's these eight. Like, if you're going to, like, adjust it, I like that, like, little triangle. But you also might be a guy that's like, I don't have a family or dog, but I can do finish shit. Like, right, right, right. right. You, you play to your strengths. Yeah. Um, online dating, sexy, aw, again. This sounds bad. Wild card? I mean, you need some because you want to start attracting the kind of women you yeah, want to connect on those like personal things. But the photos that get me the best matches, the sexy photos, the ones where you're like looking your best, clearly. What's your sexy photo? Um, I had a few. I got the I one I was going to point at. It. Like, look right over here. <laughs> like, what's I'm, your sexy what's photo? I got one on the balcony where it's like the chest up. And he's like, that's, he's like, that's maybe, a big, are you maybe topless? Maybe added, Wait, no, chest maybe up? Were you topless? Oh, no, it's like black shirt. It's just, it's just face, chest up, good smile. Another one could be like the blade brand, brand, looking he's away. Like, he's like, this is a picture of me grabbing the bull by the horse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure post edit, we can show my pictures. Yeah, and I'll, I'll show you guys as you're watching this. Here's some. Are you doing like blue steel? Are you like? Well, watch the future episode. See, all right. You have to watch on YouTube, guys. Look, it's scrolling right here. Here, here's the picture. Man, I, I enjoy I, this. I fight on this a lot, Jared, because I think it's like. People who post their whole life on social media drive me crazy. I have like, right. I, I have Shocker. A, I have a rule. No, no. I have a Shocker. rule. anti-marketing Albert. Yeah. The guys who post themselves. Albert thinks the best marketing my... is to go buy a bunch of business cards and throw them away. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. He's like, oh, those men are going to be all Albert, over my shit. Albert only agreed to be on his podcast if he promised not to air it. Yeah. <laughs> they had to find the VHS version. Yeah. He's like, no link below, please. Yeah. <laughs> So whatever you do, Albert Method, don't subscribe. Yeah. Okay. He's like, my teachings are a boy. No let me, clues. All right. So here's my here's my thing. <laughs> I hate when people post twenty stories a day, but I hate when people don't post at all. So you can't do zero, but you can't do too many. So I think the magic number is, is three. Fine. Oh, three, yeah. three, okay. three stories a day. I think is the perfect number. Three oh, stories a day. Oh, I mean, yeah. I think that's even that's excessive. Yeah. No, no, on a on a posting day. So three stories a day, two or three times a week. That to me is the, oh, the right. I think you can post every day. Oh, okay. yeah. But never if you anybody who posts more than three times a day should be shot. Unless you're literally doing it for I know business. that I, I business, was yeah. terrible, but I thought that like one every forty eight hours was nice. Like no. as a guy, like you're not doing that much interesting shit. Okay, I'll tell you I'll tell you, you a sneaky one. I'll tell you a sneaky one. Here's a good one right. for the guys. Um so I know a big trend, and I see girls do this all the time, and I think guys do it too, is they check to see who's viewed your story. You know what I'm saying? Like you go on your story and you're like, all right, who, oh, saw, who saw this one? Who exactly. saw that one? And it's a way of, I think, when you're like early date stages dating someone to see like, are they looking at all my stories? Yeah. So I think that's why. All right, you want some mindfuckers? It's a stalker, I think stalker that, check. You want some toxic shit where you can, you can throw out with yeah, the stories? Yeah, we want like, right. So I think that, that for that purpose, when you do the three stories, the first one's always going to have the most views, right? right? And then the second one usually tapers off a little bit and the third one, Often has the least. And you're like, but Brittany watched all four. Yeah. So if you have I've somebody that watched all of them, now you know that they there's interest there. They didn't just right. sweep by. Right. Sweep or they're by. And that's bored. why if I, there's a girl I like and I'm watching her story. She posts five stories. I'll, I'll look at the uh, first three. Stop. 
So she sees wow. me trail off. Holy cow. She sees the trail off where she's like, oh, that's he's watching it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's next level. That's deadly. That's really that's deadly. Oh, wow. I was like, let's throw a little bit of toxic uh, shit in there. But wow. yeah, that's impressive. So that way, again, she's just seeing, oh, he's in my store. Wait, he's not. Why didn't he? Why did he stop? Why did he stop? Because I've seen girls do it. I'm like, who are they looking for? I'm like, I guess they're literally trying to see if certain people watch all their stories. I like that. That's, that's really nice. effective. That's nice. um, speaking of, I had an interesting. Everything I get from girls. I saw girls do it to me. And I'm just like, that's good. <clears throat> and then I'm like, no. Oh, I could reverse it's like the okay thing. Remember when you're like, that's not a response when they say okay or K and you you just say like, that back. Wait a minute, I could do I this. could do this. All right, so I got an interesting message here. My game. I got an interesting text message and I want to bring it up to you guys. Sure. Um, let me know what you guys think about this. So a, a, a girl I used to date uh, sent me this text message. What do you think about it, Jared? Um, the text was, "Do you think this colonoscopy <laughs> is going to be easier than accidental anal with you?" What do, you, what do you think about that message? How would you respond to that from an ex-girlfriend? I, I would have start, no matter what I responded with, I would have started the sentence with, I'm no doctor, but. <laughs> I'm no doctor, but. Do you think this I would, say, no, I, I would respond back, why separate the two? <laughs> why separate the two? How about, just, how about, is it medical grade lube, question mark? Can uh, we just put all this behind us? Uh, that's, that's nice. That's what I should have said. That's, that's what nice. I should have said. That's good stuff. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, you got to keep it. Can you it, imagine they drug her up? They get her in the hospital. She's fading off, and then you take the mask off, and it's you, and you're like, "Are you ready for the colonoscopy? <laughs> um, are you ready for this colonoscopy? <laughs> you ready?" Oh, um, or man. some of the colonoscopy accidental anal. Jared, let's talk about like how do you think people can maintain like the sex life as their relationship gets along, right? Because when you first meet someone, it's fun, it's exciting, people are excited. He already said it with the social media thing. He said costumes. <laughs> yeah, but when you're in the grind, you're living together, it's like the old saying, right? Behind every hot woman, there's a guy that's like tired of having sex with her, right? How do you overcome that? above my expertise. I mean, How we, do you we overcome sex coach in this. I, I shout out to Lori Handlers. I think she's the perfect one to, I mean, rock, this girl's in her, I mean, this lady woman is in her 70s and shit. And finding new ways to keep it interesting for her partner, keeping him on the, like. So if wow. we want to uh, uh, make a mental note, we gotta get but what do you do? What podcast. do you guys do? I know this guy gets weird. Yeah, I, I'll, yeah, I'll you're refer the king to of weird. You're the king of weird kinky stuff in the bedroom. Not to put you on blast, make you comfortable. I guarantee nobody's watching that you have to be concerned about right now. <laughs> I, think, I think one time. By the way, Jerry, Hi, mom. I think one time <laughs> Jerry, he said something to me. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, tell me. No, yeah. I think one time a girl said to me, "So and so, so." We should play there sometime. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Brandon's response to that was, you want to say it? Oh, yeah. I said that uh, every time a girl's ever said something, something, want to play, it's always involved her licking my asshole. It always ends with her. Yeah. Speaking, of, <laughs> yeah. speaking of, you just met, I don't say names, but a girl at Tortuga, you ran into an old friend. Yeah, what about that? saying her name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was the one who convinced this shit. The one and only time I had my asshole. Oh, yeah. Right oh, yeah. She, was, she was like, oh, I really want to give him a... A, a situation from the rear, and I was like, "Well, are so what's you?" What's he are just you, asking? Yeah, she's she's yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that sounded way worse. Yeah, whatever. He's like, "Let me, let me articulate." She wanted, she a situation, she wanted the rear. a situation with his rear. Whatever. Like, no, she, she's wanted, like, they met at a gay club. Yeah, no, she <laughs> wanted to eat his ass. She <laughs> wanted to eat his ass, and I said, yeah. "What's the problem?" And she was like, "I don't feel comfortable going to your house with a machete." And that's when that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's when she, he was like, "What do I do, Brandon?" And he was like, "Should I nair? Should I shave?" And then she was the first one to give him a little. uh a well, little, little tongue tornado. Wonder. Wow, that's impressive, brother. It wasn't for you after that? I'm proud of you. It was emasculating for me. It was weird. Yeah, I'm sure Brandon feels the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about a uh, little... Hey, Brandon, let's help these guys. So is that the key, Brandon? Stuff? Is weird stuff? What is, what, what is a good is that the sex key, life? What weird, weird to like, stuff? You've been in a long-term huh? relationship now for a long yeah. time. Uh, yeah, every, long every time. time I've been in a long-term relationship, it's been for a long time. <laughs> usually, yeah. usually it's going to take a long time to be. So how do you keep, do you spice it up? Do you guys try Does it progress? Does it progress randomly? Do you start off the gate with the, like, the... I think it starts idiot. with the crazy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you alternate? Well, let me, I have an answer. I, have, I picture right, them with a so, bag at home, and they draw out of it. Like, what's going to happen today? You do start. Anal. No, you do start slowly. So what? the first time, yeah. obviously, just start with the clown nose, right? <laughs> Second time, you go makeup. Third time, actually, this is where a lot of people go. They go, you go hair, and I go, no. You go nose, makeup, big shoes. <laughs> big shoes. And that's how you slowly introduce them to the weird that's stuff. That's how you get to the yeah. weird stuff. Yeah. And then you break out, obviously, like the yeah. mouse traps, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not llamas. Yeah. You're like, let them, you're like, let them in the room. Yeah, it gets nuts. All right, let me ask you. Right. Do you, do you ask you? I will recommend, no, honestly, if you're going to use something, though, this. ostrich feathers. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Brandon. All this is all joking, or no joking. So He's not going to get specific. No, he'll answer this. Do you bring up 
the weird shit do you want to try like before is there like a is there like an uh, arbitration Christ. hearing is there like a deposition or do you try it and then say like do you, okay let me, do you talk about it first or that, do you just, that's what I'm you just go into it yeah uh yes well you Th bring it up you're like one, tonight, you're like tonight, 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 tonight. It's different different every time okay different every time different every time so you don't like lay it out at the dinner table i yeah, Jesus Christ! Uh, there's notice. There's a discussion beforehand. It was like you're in a bedroom, and you're like, I know. How does this work? I way? love my girlfriend. Uh, there's different strokes for different folks, right? So you can. We're tell. trying to figure out how they're stroking you, buddy. I, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> That's what we're trying to figure out. I've told Al this like many times before. Like when he's dating a girl, I'll be like, Yeah, this girl's gonna be boring in bed. So number one, you can like, oh, you have like mentalism for that yeah, stuff. You, you can, can tell. Just, okay, you right, can let's get it. off you for a second. Should they talk about it with the girl ahead of time, or should they kind of like go for it? And hope for the best. If you are a person who is learning about how to attract the opposite sex and like learning about how to go out there and in your program, no. That is some really advanced, really, if really beginner, advanced stuff beginner, right. that you will definitely fuck up with like the wrong comma. So that is like... So I, start is like just normal. I think I need to work on this so basic. Yeah, that's but, like for a normal person in a normal relationship, that's something to have... Like a conversation after like three months of serious dating okay. and like have an open conversation about your sex I'll tell you that. So how can we... So that's, that, that's the best so way to do it for, for a normal For a guy without person. your kinks and experience, <laughs> how, can we, how can the average guy have a fulfilling, awesome sex life? What are some tips that you can give him? The number one thing is just honesty. The number one thing is like I just said, like have open, honest uh, dialogue and conversations. Because I do feel like people get bored of sex because they have underlying things that they're afraid to ask for. So ask more, like just be okay. Yeah, like, so be okay. But it sounded weird. Be okay asking and you have to be okay with them being like, no, I'm sorry, I'm not into that. So I got to tell you, I think it's actually a really good Super point. Super fun for me today. No, I think it's a good point. This is payback from the beginning yeah, of the show. Yeah, all right. So I don't want to hear it. We did talk about your Everything's out in the open. This is what, that's why we're, we, we do here. Listen, so I think that guys don't spend enough time working And God on, doesn't let us market this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never think, run for political office after yeah. this. I think that... uh guys don't spend enough time working on improving their sex game i really don't i don't i think it's like a thing that's like guys think they have it or they don't like i don't think they have enough chances i mean we we just talked about the percentage like 26 percent of men right now under the age of 30 are virgins when did we talk about that oh maybe that wasn't <laughs> but the, pro the problem yeah. is though yeah, like, that's a real I, that's a real stat i as of this year 26 more than a quarter of men are virgins under the age of 30. For sure. But I, what I'm telling you, Jared, no, with all due respect, is like this is for the guys that actually take their shit seriously, invest in themselves, join the program, um, become successful, and then what is going to happen? You're going to have sexual partners. Yeah. So when you get to that level of success, like no offense to those 26%, they're just punting at life. Well, they're not taking the necessary strides. So the guys that are actually putting in the work, that are actually grinding and getting success. Like actually grinding. Yeah, literally. Yeah. By the time you get a girl back and you're like, okay, I'm going to start this, like don't spend all this time working on cold approach, building your lifestyle, building your digital, what you call it, digital, uh, digital body language, digital body language to then trip again, shout out yeah, to you, to brother. then be successful and then be like, oh, like you don't know what you're doing in bed. Here, the here's the other one. Hang out with you again. Here's the other problem though, is I think that yes, that's important, but I also think that like the majority of guys, maybe fucking me too in this category are just like having sex and being like, this is good enough. And they like do the same thing for every single girl and they're not like asking questions and getting feedback yeah they gotta they're feedback. not like do you like this does this feel good and this goes back into if, if i can summarize modern success teachings in one word i just talked about this on in class today is experience the whole point of what we're trying to do is give this woman an amazing experience so that she wants to choose us over the competition over their guys. On, wait we watch the altai issue like this sorry I'm doing everybody this don't edit this out please <laughs> no, 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 no. bunny ears bunny ears one uh and i think guys lose out of that because it's so much about what they can get versus what they can give and it doesn't stop in you know with the the opener how do i give her an amazing experience with this opener the attraction obviously the connection the dates how do i make this a better experience like it is somewhat showmanship while you're screening for what you want. And that's the balance act. All right, Jared, look at, let me tell you this. this is, I'm just talking about this. Even sex. How do I give her an orgasm yeah, right. experience? So that's how I was thinking about this. I'm like, what's a good example? This is, this is the best I could come up with. I think having sex with a woman for me is like planning, throwing, and experiencing an event, like a party, right? So I'm the beginning of it is set up. 
It's arranging. It's making. He's sure like at the every, end confetti. Yeah, no, literally. It's, it's like every, literally you pop. All oh, right, there's a different kind of confetti. Um, so the, <laughs> yeah, we're talking so, about two different. So things. sexual experience is like all of it is setting it up and having a good experience for the the guests, right? The people attending, the girl, and then at the end when everything's set up and everything's good, now I can relax and have fun. The end. Of this sex. goes back to him calling his apartment the venue. <laughs> So I like, mean, we blasted. I remember having sex in Monkey Jungle in the in the me venue. And you were, what? Me and you were. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I, I, mean, goes I, I, remember, I remember. Guys, we blast. I remember having sex. I mean, you were part. blocked out. Like, I know. Um, okay. Oh my god. I remember god. having sex, and like it would be just sh- a clownery. Be, like I would. Like I, I told you, first the nose, <laughs> then the makeup. <laughs> I would have sex. No, literally, this is my routine. I would have sex, and then I would blast. I just had sex. Oh, like, only, oh my god! Yeah. Blasting from the. I'm sure the, the girls really appreciated it. It was fun. He came I out and high five me. Yeah, I did I, a post game interview. I say something. I'm giving up. <laughs> no, granted, oh, we were in our good. 20s and it was like it was just silly shit. But like the girl, they ate it up. It was an experience. It was just funny. Experience. They ate it up, or you did? Oh yeah. Jesus. I also, I, oftentimes you don't know this, but we've described sex uh, now with each other again. With, uh, <laughs> this has been a really gay episode. I love it. Wink. Uh, sex with, with women, ideally. So we're, uh, we're, we're, we're positive yeah, about we're, this now. Yeah, whatever. I don't think gay exists. I think it's all just where everybody just does everybody. Right. So we've dis- we described sex. Yeah. <laughs> so we describe sex as like pitching, like a baseball pitcher. So like just penis only as fastball. Uh, right? Sometimes Albert is catching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, some guys that just think it's like show up with a penis is like having one pitch. I just throw a fastball. Yeah. It's but like, like tackle football. Being able to go down on a girl, that's like throw, having a good breaking ball. ball. High dimensional Finger, man. Fingering. I mean, that's like a change up, right? Yeah. Like uh, getting creative. That's like, I don't know, uh, what's a sweeper? Like, Finger is a change up for you. Is you there Google Translate for guys that don't know baseball? <laughs> yeah. Well, Jesus it's, it's like a different kind of pitch. People know what different I'm convinced. Anal licking the knuckleball. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Anal licking. That's I'm big. convinced that. 90% of guys are horrific at sex. I think maybe more. Horrific. And a lot of a lot of it comes from like hearing my own friends talk. Honestly, maybe that's why I would think the women, you know, that we talk to it like Dude, that would do confirm it. Yeah. I think it's guys good. are just like rough doggy, am I right? Like, and they just have no idea. Maybe that's why women like work so hard to to withdraw, like to keep the vagina away from men, because men are just maybe. So bad at sex. Women contribute to the problem though, because women won't communicate either. Women won't be like yeah, that was horrific. Yeah. We need to do th- they don't. things different. Yeah, they also play They're just down like, down. oh, yeah. Like, faking orgasms helps nobody. It, really it helps play nobody. Really the doesn't. devil's advocate. The, the worst thing that for sex is the vibrator. That that's numbs true. it. it, it that's true. You're competing with but, machine. Yeah, but that's... It's man versus machine. Can I tell you something? That's, you know, that they're like, oh, chicken and the egg. Which came first? Men being bad at sex came first. That's, that's sure, why but the vibrator. They didn't know how bad it was until the vibrator. They're like, what do you know? Like, Pornography is doing sex worse because yeah, men are, guys are exp- have unrealistic mm, expectations yeah. and girls do but too now. Here's the other thing men are also big fucking ego babies and don't want to bring a vibrator like into the bedroom. Like, if your girl can only I have got an orgasm. in there. Yeah. I mean, but then something for Anna too. Use? What does she use? You're right. <laughs> 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 But like men, so dude, men are ego maniacs, and they're just yeah. like, "Oh no, no! Like I can get the job done. Trust me. If we do missionary for eighteen minutes, you're gonna come." All right, it's all time. Like, like yeah. you, if you can't fucking do it, just bring a I vibrator. Mean, I, and then I, ra- a great time. I, I was raised where one hundred percent the opposite. No, like bringing up, like, can I do certain things or try certain things? Was like, I felt like a complete, like, like a like a pussy for even like suggesting certain things like that. So like, I get it that like, it's hard to like have ownership of like, Dude, there's guys that don't want girls on top. Cause they feel emasculated. Like what, what is that nonsense? They won't go that's down wild. on a girl. Cause it's, Whoa, it's I've wild. seen that's wild. I said all kinds of stuff like that. Where like, she should sell bouquets. She should just only go down on you and do the stuff. And like, again, it just goes down to men just thinking the most cool yeah, awesome like, thing macho. is what I can get the girl to do. And yeah. like, again, it goes, goes, Power philosophy, give, 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 amazing experience. And one of my mentors actually said this, the most selfish thing you can do is to give because of all these, because of reciprocation, right. because of building trust, because of all this stuff, when you give, when there's social circle, with dating, when you are a value giver, you're going to get people bringing it back and Brent your life is going to get short. exponentially better. So it's true. With one of the most... There's a reason these billionaires are like big time philanthropists yeah. and like give massive charities because of networking benefits. Philanderers, you mean? Yeah. Full on rapists. Full on what? <laughs> what? Well, all right, coming out. That's the only time we. <laughs> They're full on rapists. Is that what he said? What? 
philanthropist. Oh, they said four hour oh, lives. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. It's, from a, it's always it's funny in Philadelphia. Well, this episode brought to you by Jared the Subway Guy. <laughs> <laughs> it was so nice being not canceled there, folks. Yeah, uh, no, we're going to get those 30, 33 years where I wasn't canceled were nice. We had a we're good one. Oh, the I mean, fire's out. Would you look at that? Yeah, oh, oh, what are you going to do? I hate to see it. Oh, man. Next time, music festivals. I want to hear how Albert's trip to Tortuga went. Yes. Okay, we'll talk to you. Stay tuned for next time, guys, because this next episode will be not this one, but the next one. We're going to get sponsored so I can get some longer shorts, by the way, guys. Yeah. Unless it's Aloe. If Aloe wants to sponsor me, I'm down. All right, but if Lulu wants me, then... Are we out of the, is the episode closed? Boom. Now it is. Now it's closed. There we go.